guys. So today we're going to be getting rid of an EFI password on a mid-2015 iMac. Uh, All right, so you've made a heat shield over there. Okay, so I made a heat shield uh, to put over the fan. Uh, you could take this out. That's going to add like 20 minutes to your job. Uh, to be quite honest, it's not necessary, so I made a heat shield to protect all of the plastic here. I'm going to be using the hot air gun and blowing this way uh, so as not to burn this connector, not burning this connector down here. So if you're looking for the board number, it's hidden in small print right there by that connector right there. You can see it. Uh, so this bad boy right here is the one we're going to be looking at. Uh, we want to remember which pin is pin 1 and what orientation it went in. Uh, so you might see the little dot right there. I'm not sure if you can see it on mm -hmm. camera. Yep. Okay. Um, so I already took my phone and took a picture of that on a previous take. Um, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our heat gun. Putting the flex on there too? No flex, taking it off. What kind of settings are we um, using here? So uh, are... Right now I'm using 480, so just under max heat uh, and 60 airspeed. Just over half airspeed. Max do take quite a bit of heat too to... Now normally it wouldn't be taking this long, but I'm doing this in the chassis and I don't want to give it too much heat. Uh, that's why I have it on lower settings. You can see now just to cool it down, it's roughing up to its max airspeed. Okay, so now we can put this thing in the dumpster. Very funny. Let's remove this off the bench. Yep. Okay, so now that we have our chip out, we want to plug in our uh, flash reader. Uh, so this one goes to USB, so I just plug it into any of our USBs, or USB ports. Uh, now it comes with a driver CD, you're going to need to run the installer and stuff, um, so that it actually recognizes this. So there are some instructions on here. Uh, so this is supposed to be a representation of the IC. It has pin 1 in the upper left corner, from our perspective. Uh, so that means this. So that correlates to the dot on the chip then? Yes, that correlates to the dot on the chip. Okay. The dot always indicates pin 1. Uh, so we have this little nifty adapter that does this to dip 8. So we're going to put that in there. Like that. So it's nice and solid. Then we want to press down, drop the chip in, lift up, wiggle it a little with our fingers. Uh, and then we can move right over onto the screen. Okay, so this is our tool that we want to use right here. So we're going to open it up, make it full screen, and then we choose which microchip this is. Uh, so that's from the last project I was working on. Uh, so you may need to take it out, uh, back out of the adapter, and look at the numbers on it. This one is 25L64, so I'm going to type that in here, 25L64. And 06E, 06E. Okay. Now that we have the correct chip selected, we're going to put the IC back in there. Then we're going to click on this button here, which reads the programming off of it. So sometimes it will say uh, pin detect error and it'll have a little red X around one of these pins over here. Uh, typically what I do for that is if we switch over to the real life camera here, um, I just take my finger, I press down and wiggle it a little bit and I try again. Okay. And sometimes that fixes it. So red, go ahead and click cancel. And then so now we can see the file here which is Blank in this part, but you can see. Don't you hit that search thing for it? Yeah, you can hit the search thing. But here is, you can see there's actually data here, even though a lot of it looks blank at the top. So there's all.
So we're going to do control F. We're going to find dollar sign S V S. Find next. You want to make sure you select ASCII 2. Okay, we'll put the chip back on the board, remembering which way the dot went. Sucks that having flux on there. Yeah. Okay, now I got those two targets on the